What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is Carter Scotland Allen here, and today we are taking a look at the 14th film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is Doctor Strange, released in 2016, written and directed by Scott Derrickson, and starring Benedict Cumberbatch as Stephen Strange, the Sorcerer Supreme himself. Let's not waste any more time and get right into this movie review. This is the 14th film released in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but it is the first Marvel Cinematic Universe film that I will be reviewing here on the channel. And that is, of course, all leading up to the release of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. So, let's review this film. Can't wait, we've got only a couple more weeks until the sequel, but let's not waste any more time and get right into it. Doctor Strange's life changes after a car accident robs him of the use of his hands. When traditional medicine fails him, he looks for healing and hope. He quickly learns that the Enclave is at the front line of a battle against unseen dark forces bent on destroying reality. Before long, Strange is forced to choose between his life of fortune and status, or leave it all behind to defend the world as the most powerful sorcerer in existence. So we are going to start with the directing of this film. I have to say, as a first entry into the more mystical, magical side of things with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, this was a good first attempt. Uh, it wasn't didn't completely stick the landing, but it did a really good job at solidifying who Stephen Strange is going to become. I do think this film was about 20 minutes too long, as well as the villain wasn't that interesting, even though I do love Mads Mikkelsen. Uh, I just think that there are some choices that really were just kind of uh, expected, and that's why they were kind of lackluster. They were very formulaic. Uh, this is one of those Marvel movies that did did kind of start to feel like, okay, we've, we've kind of seen this before. Okay, now on to the cast and the characters. So, Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange. He is he's perfect. He's the perfect casting. Nobody should ever uh, recast this character. They shouldn't redo this character once he's done with the role, or at least not for a very, very, very long time, because this is one of those specific casting choices that just works, just like Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. I don't think that is a character that should be rebooted. Um, again... Disney and Marvel will probably do it eventually because of money, but I truly, truly hope that uh, Benedict stays around for a long time so that way this character can grow because I don't think that this first iteration is the is the best example of what Doctor Strange is and could be. Um, but it, again, it is a good starting ground, and I think just even his smaller appearances in later films, just even his his end credit scene, I want to say in like Thor or something like that, or maybe it was the end credit scene to, to this movie, um, where he's where he's talking to Thor and he refills up his his beard. Like it's moments like that where you do see this this small little character growth and um, just character development where you see into uh, Strange's life and his mind and. This, this first film did a good job at solidifying that he is, you know, kind of this bittersweet asshole um, at times. <laughs> Rachel McAdams, she's fantastic as Christine Palmer. There's not much to say about her because she is, again, just like most other love interests within the MCU. I will say, though, I am very excited to see her reappear in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, as well as we did get to see her already in What If, which was very nice to see. Like I said before, Mads Mikkelsen is great in everything, but Caecilius really didn't do much for me. He wasn't that intimidating, so um, he really wasn't that intimidating after the first sequence where he does the decapitation. That that was intimidating, and then the rest of the film was kind of a little bit downhill um, for his character's part. And Tilda Swinton is fantastic as the Ancient One. I personally wasn't... Uh, too aware of who Tilda Swinton was until this film came out, and this performance definitely made me want to check out more of her work, and I ended up going watching, uh, you know, We Need to Talk About Kevin and a few other roles, and uh, you know, she's she's a fantastic actress. <laughs> and now on to the story. So this story, once again, it is a very generic Marvel story. It's very formulaic, and that's why uh, upon, upon rewatch uh, for this review, for going into Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, I was, you know, I was like, okay, I'm gonna watch it, I'm gonna get excited for the sequel, and I ended up shedding this movie off halfway through. Uh, Daviana and I, my girlfriend and I, we both, we both got bored. Uh, that kind of sucks to say, and I've never had that happen uh, with a Marvel movie where I've genuinely, you know, put it on randomly and just wanted to turn it off. I've never had that happen, um, or at least never had it happen to where I could remember it. Uh, so that, that did kind of suck. 
um, because I I truly do like Doctor Strange and I, I like what we have seen of Doctor Strange outside of this first appearance. But yeah, I it's really kind of a, a lackluster story. It moves really slow. I think this story is is drawn out too much. It could have been crammed into an hour. Um, the literally the last like forty five minutes hour could have been a completely different story essentially like i i don't even know if i'm making sense but i just it felt boring it was boring okay now we're going to move on to the story as for the story this is one very generic marvel movie one very formulaic uh take it's got all the generic beats of some of the previous marvel films before you know you've got good guys bad guys bad guy takes something from the good guys good guys chase them down throughout the whole movie and then they have a fight um and that is essentially all that happens uh yeah it's kind of boring <laughs> the only reason this film works as well as it does is because of the the visual aspect of of everything going on because of the fact that it is so mystical and magical if you didn't have these crazy visual effects going on this story you know, really wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been interesting, at least to me. Um, I, I personally kind of think of this like, like that new movie Ambulance, where the cops are trying to get their friend out of the ambulance, but then the bad guys are in the ambulance. So it's like, they're trying to get that thing, but they can't. And it's just one long chase. And I'm just not there to see one long chase, unless it's really well fucking done. This film is an origin story overall, but it does feel like it comes a couple years too late. Yeah, and I have to say, everything that is in this story doesn't lend this film to have much rewatch value because I feel like most of the character development for Doctor Strange happens within this very first beginning act. And so after that, you're just watching another generic Marvel action film, which can be fun, but to me, got really boring. I liked the brutality of the car accident, even though it wasn't bloody, but you, you knew that his hands were crippled. You could tell, like, him trying to, uh, you know, heal. Like, all of that stuff was very satisfying to me. But, again, after the first 30, 40 minutes, it just becomes a generic action film. Now, moving on to the cinematography. So, this cinematography isn't honestly fantastic, and some people are going to think I'm crazy for that. Uh, yeah, it, it looks fine, but I think what people are going to give most of the credit to is the CGI of the, you know, the worlds turning in on themselves and the worlds reversing and things like that. It is captured well. Uh, it's not ugly, per se. It's just not too engaging if it's not the visual effects, if it's not the, the magic, which, you know, again, there is framing with, you know, CGI and stuff because obviously it's, all ending up on one same screen but again it didn't feel anything didn't feel like anything revolutionary or super mind-blowing the visual effects were cool but again nothing to go screaming to everybody about again I, I there's plenty of other films with great CGI and better stories so that's that's that and now on to the score so the score is good. It's from Michael Giacchino, Giacchino, however you pronounce it. He is a great composer. He makes great music. However, it's just not very memorable for Doctor Strange. And that's where I'm like, okay, is it good? Is it great? I, I, I think I should probably fall back and say that it was good. Um, you know, the Spider-Man trilogy, that, that music is fantastic. I'm not talking about the Sam Raimi, well yes, that Sam Raimi music is fantastic, but the new Tom Holland trilogy music is is fantastic. That's Michael Giacchino. Giacchino. He's done he's done so many films where the the score is just fantastic. But this is one of those films where it's good, but I don't remember it and I kind of like to remember those superhero tunes. You think of Doctor Strange, there's no tune that comes to my mind. And now on to the final thoughts. So, Doctor Strange, I really enjoyed in the theaters. I thought it was a very, very, very fun time. I've seen the film about five or six times since then, and just on this last rewatch was the very first time that I've ever turned it off. Um, and that is my sign, my signal to myself that, 
hey, don't watch this movie for another couple years because you're not going to get very much enjoyment out of it. I, I know what I like in that film, and most of it is within those first 30 to 40 minutes. So if I know that, why why waste that time to not watch the rest of the movie? Um, that's how, you know, I don't want to sit for the first 20 minutes and then turn it off and, you know, and just enjoy that. I like enjoying a full picture, so... So that's even more of a reason for me to not go and watch that first half that I do enjoy, which again kind of sucks. Um, I would much rather watch Doctor Strange appear in other films, like even his performance in Spider-Man No Way Home. I think I would have, I, I think I enjoyed more than in Doctor Strange, and that's not Cumberbatch's fault. It's just the story is very lackluster. I think as a first attempt to bring a character that's so unique and so wild this was an overall success. Uh, the box office says so. Like, this movie did well. Um, it Obviously, it's doing well enough to get a sequel directed by Sam Raimi. Like, the sequel's probably going to be fucking fantastic. It's going to blow the first one out of the water. And I personally am, one, uh, glad that Scott Derrickson is not returning um, because it sounds like there were multiple issues on the second one, and it's just I didn't enjoy it too much of the first one on any of the rewatches, so uh, yeah, I'm very excited to see what Sam Raimi has for the new film. But as for this first film, it was a good good first attempt, good footing, um, not much rewatch value. It's not my favorite movie, it's not my least favorite movie. It's not my least favorite Marvel movie, it's not my least favorite superhero movie. It's just not great. Um, it is a fun time, but I don't see myself revisiting this uh, for probably another five to ten years. I think this will probably end up being one of those films that I end up watching when I watch the whole MCU, when I watch all of the Infinity Saga, that's when I'll probably go back and watch this, um, just because I personally don't find too much enjoyment seeing this film by itself, which does kind of suck to say. It is a standalone film, but for me it doesn't stand alone well enough. Again, if you love Doctor Strange, you probably already have this movie. If you like the MCU, you probably have this movie. If you're a huge Marvel fan and you have all of the MCU, you have this movie. Uh, I, I get it, you know, I will be collecting this film for the fact of I want to have the whole Infinity Saga. But again, uh, that's just because the completionist in me wants the whole Infinity Saga collection. And this is one of my least favorite in the Infinity Saga. Woo, I had to sneeze. So yeah, I will be buying this film to have all of the Infinity Saga However, it is one of the Marvel films that I don't see myself re-watching anytime soon. Also, I forgot to point out, I got my Doctor Strange Funko Pop right there and my Ancient One Funko Pop right here. So, I am, I, I do like the characters. It's just the film overall didn't do much for me. Um, even including the Ancient One's death, like, I kind of just remembered that now. So, like, it's very forgettable. Um, but that's my review for Doctor Strange. I am very excited for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So the expectations for that film versus this film were very, 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 very different. I, I cannot wait. So stay tuned for my Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness review when that film comes out. Uh, I also have Doctor Strange appearances ranked coming out as well as Scarlet Witch Wanda Maximoff appearances ranked before... Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So stay tuned for those videos this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Carter Scotland Allen, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.